Hello everyone, welcome back to Prosto Hub and myself Dr. Jolsna. So today I have come with a topic that is the most demanding one from the Prosto Hub subscribers that is how to prepare for your MDS practical exam and what all things you have to take care during the exam day and the questions you can expect in the chair side as well as the grand viva along with case history discussion. So this session is based on my experience during my PG days, the way I attended the exam and how I prepared and this is also based on the exam curriculum that we followed in our college. So hope this session uh, will be useful for many of you, especially those you are who are going to attend the exams this year. So let's start and before beginning I request everyone to please do like and share my videos if you are finding them useful. So the contents include how to prepare for the practical exam, what all things you have to take care and stuffs to be ready with for the exam day and the viva preparation, the important things you have to remember while preparing for the viva and attending viva and finally case history discussion. So under the exam preparation, the first and the foremost point I would like to emphasize is about time management. So for us there was only around a one week after the theory exam for our practicals. So usually you have a duration of around one week or even less than that. So within that time you have to manage everything. So the time management is the most important thing. You have to manage the time efficiently and smartly. And the next one is arranging the exam patient. It is a must that the patient that is the exam patient should be ready before your theory exam. So there is no time for search as I have already said there is only one week time between the theory and the practicals. So you have to get the patient for your CD exam as well as for your uh, tooth preparation. So make sure that your exam patient is ready and it is always good if you have a backup patient too. If the exam patient is not able to come due to any reason, you can rely on your backup patient. So always have a backup patient for both your uh, CD as well as FPD. Then one more point I would like to add is never do the CD exam on a, a fresh or a new patient. Always select a patient whom you have done already the jaw relation tracings and delivered a good CD. So you as, as well as the patient are both familiar with the procedures and the patient will also have an idea of what all you are going to do and it will be helpful for your exam. So always select a patient whom you have already done the CD procedures with. Then the next thing is about your junior who is going to assist in your exam. So make sure that you are going to participate your junior in all the works that you are doing so she or he gets a clear cut idea about the exam day procedures it will be helpful for that junior also for her or his exam so make sure that you participate your assistant in all the works and always have a good friendly bond with your junior assistant and it is not only about the junior assistant have a good uh, unity among your co-PGs and among your juniors and all the interns and department. So all these will help in the smooth functioning of the practical exam. So that is one more point I have to add then arranging the clinical side stuffs. So do all the clinical works prior to your practical exam. So you will have a hell lot of works to do that is uh, you have to make a primary impression the primary cast uh, the secondary impression, the master cast. So um, on the primary cast, you can expect the uh, viva on maybe the examiner will start from the primary cast like dimensions, the ideal dimension of a primary cast. And uh, for the master cast, you will need three to four sets because the way we did our exam was we have one set to show to the examiner. Then on the next set, we did the jaw relation and kept it ready. And then the another set with the tracers attached. So you need two to three sets of your master cast. And then uh, all these stuffs needs to be ready and uh, make a list of all the clinical instruments that you require and have a check it with it. And all the things should be set prior to the exam day. So everything should be set prior to the exam day. Don't keep any work to be done on the exam day so all things should be ready so this is about exam preparation next let's see the exam day stuffs that you will need 
the first thing is a clean apron for you and a clean drape for the patient so always be presentable and give a, a good first impression to the examiner it does matter and then the clinical instruments all the clinical instruments that you have should be neat and clean so we used to have an instrument pouch which had individual pockets for each and every instrument so, and that can be rolled so we used to unroll it and keep it in front of us in the working area so there was no mess and uh, there was easy access to each and every instrument so if you want a fresh instrument you can get it from your um, juniors who have just joined the first years so they will have these uh, uh, brand new ones so you can get them but never forget to return it once you are done with your exam and always remember to have a clean macintosh sheet and also a set of new instrument that is diagnostic instrument uh, you have to give to the examiner okay so remember those points then your thesis ld special case case album pedagogy seminars and preclinical works all these things should be ready so for us we had to make a small powerpoint presentation on our thesis the special case and the pedagogy topic which we got prior to our exam so we had to arrange these pedagogy topics in the order of the exam roll number in a pen drive and keep it ready and the preclinical works also we had to exhibit it all the preclinical works that we have done during our course time so arranging the pedagogy topics in pen drive and preclinical work exhibition all these tasks were assigned to our juniors then uh, uh, we had to take a print of the word document of the seminars that we have did, did that we had done on, uh, during our course time and we also had questions from the seminars during our grand viva and then we had a case album uh, which included all the important and uh, special cases that we did during our course time so all these stuffs you have to be ready with and finally the most important one arrange food for yourself junior as well as the patient you will not have time to go out and you will not have time to order anything so assign the stars to someone like uh, for us we arranged the food uh, we assigned the stars to our interns so they arranged food for ourselves as well as the juniors and the patient so this is also important so these are the exam day stuffs that you have to take care of and clinical instrument i repeat make a list of the all the instruments and materials that you need and check it prior to the exam day and never ever share your materials with any one any of your co-pgs during the exam because you will not have time to wait for another so all these stuffs you have to remember next let us see the general things you have to take care during your viva preparation so the first thing is start your preparation for the viva prior to your theory exams i repeat prior to your theory exams because as i have already told there will be no time for viva preparation during that uh, interval between the theory and practical because you will have a hell lot of things to do and if you think that you can go back room or hostel and start preparing it will not be done because you will be damn tired and you just have to take a nap so always prepare for your viva alongside your theory preparation so make the note or make a list of important questions that you feel that can be asked in your viva so make a list of that and you can review it later then have a look through your exam question papers before attending your grand viva because there is chance that examiner can ask from the question paper which you have attended so never forget to have a look through your exam question paper then as i have already said be presentable have a neat and clean look and while answering always be confident in your answers and don't show your nervousness in front of the examiner whatever you are answering answer with confidence the next thing i would like to say is if you are totally unaware of any topic be frank and say i don't know so that is always better than beating around the bush so if you just tell anything related to it, it there is chance that you can say any blunders so don't do such blunders if you don't know any particular topic frank frankly say i don't know and then next thing is no argument never argue with examiner even if you are well versed with the topic always keep in mind that the external examiner is more experienced than you and he is an examiner so no one will like arguing so you should never argue with the examiner even if you are well versed with the topic then finally 
try to direct the viva to the topics which you know very well that is whenever you get a chance always answer uh, a question related to the topic that you know very well so usually the pattern is like the examiner uh, going um, examiner asks the questions based on the answers that you are giving so if you answer a particular question and that is related to the topic which you know very well then the next question will depend on that answer so always if you get a chance try to direct the viva to the topics which you know very well so all these are points that you have to keep in mind while preparing for your practical viva so next we are going to discuss with the case history so this is the most important part of your practical exam because usually every examiner starts the chair side viva with the case history that you have recorded and the basic questions so be thorough in and out of your case history and uh, give a good first impression to the examiner so what i did was i made my junior to by heart the case history format because even though we are thorough with the case history format at that point of time we may not get some points so your junior can help you out so uh, you can make your junior by heart the case history format as well as uh, study some important questions that uh, one can expect in the case history so that will be useful for you so let us start the case history discussion i am just going to briefly uh, discuss the important points in the case history and the questions you can expect in your case history so first comes the patient data that includes name age sex race address contact number and occupation and you have to be thorough with the significance of each one of these so the first one is a name so addressing a patient by his name adds a personal touch as well as helps in confidence building and age it's an indicator of the patient's ability to wear and use danger so we'll have an idea about the adaptability of the patient that means young people adapt themselves with a greater ease so they'll have almost successful danger experiences and also the physiologic condition of supporting structures so as aging occurs uh, there is poor calcification of bone and it will have an effect on the overlying mucosa as well as the danger experience next is the sex so this is critical in case of aesthetics and also the sex hormonal influence on the supporting structures so we know that women can be more demanding and are usually more concerned with their appearance than men so aesthetics should be given more importance in case of women whereas um, the hormonal influence that is in case of menopause there is a drastic change in the physiologic functions and there is effect on the bone as well as the overlying mucosa so this may make wearing of dangers difficult now next is the race uh, which is important in characterization of danger address contact number for further future communications and occupation it's critical in case of aesthetics phonetics and functional requirements so people who make public appearances like artists actors salesmen public speakers singers etc are particularly concerned with the appearance and phonetics whereas tradesmen mechanics or laborers they are more concerned with the functional efficiency so this is about the patient data so next is the chief complaint which has to be noted down in patient's own words because it helps assess the patient expectations whether he needs danger for reasons of aesthetics or mastication and also we'll get to know about the patient's psychological classification and the period of edangelessness so according to divan the dentist should meet the mind of the patient before he meets the mouth of the patient and hence dentist must determine the reason the patient is seeking the prosthodontic treatment now based on the aesthetic expectations of the patient they can be classified as class 1 class 2 and class 3 so class 1 is high cosmetic index that is they are more concerned about the treatment and wonder if their expectations can be fulfilled and class 2 is moderate that is those with nominal expectations and class 3 who doesn't care about the treatment and aesthetics so this is the cosmetic index classification which basically speaks about the aesthetic expectations of the patient next is the classification of mental attitude which is an important question that you can expect in your case history discussion as well as 
in an uh, important short note in your theory paper so you must be thorough with the mental attitude the house classification as well as the simon gamers classification so i think everyone of you must be thorough with the mental attitude classification that is the patients are classified into four the philosophic that uh, who are having the best attitude for the danger acceptance who are rational calm and easy going the indifferent one who do not desire and care for uh, danger and who do not value the danger that you are providing and exacting who are precise intelligent and immaculate patient who are seriously concerned about the appearance as well as efficiency of the artificial dangers and hysterical who are having a negative attitude towards the prosthodontic treatment and are having unrealistic expectations and usually these people will be having a poor prognosis next is the simon gamer's classification so gamer has classified patients into five groups that is the ideal submitter reluctant indifferent and resistant so if you want to know in detail please do comment below the video next is the systemic status which is another important section in your case history format so patient who generally come for complete danger treatment are in an age group where health deficiencies of various degrees are expected so here is a list of some of the diseases that you can encounter in your prosthodontic practice and you have to be thorough with these uh, diseases and the uh, considerations that must be made uh, by the dentist in case of each of these ones so diabetes is very important you can expect a short note in your theory paper on the influence of diabetes and the prosthodontic significance and the things you have to take care while treating such diabetic patients so you have to be careful in their impression techniques you have to give morning appointments and so on so be thorough with all of these so next coming to the personal history that includes diet as well as habits so diet consists of the nutrition status so the patient if having an inadequate nutrition that is a uh, one that is low in protein it can cause muscle weakness and loss of tonicity and that can result in frictional trauma during danger wearing and also there can be tissue dehydration or cirrostomia that is caused by polypharmacy calcium deficiency osteoporosis in post menopausal women etc so these factors should be identified and patients and caretakers should be educated about the importance of adequate nutrition and the role of this in the success of dental rehabilitation so you can expect a question on the significance of diet next is about the habits so patient should be investigated about the habits of smoking alcohol consumption or uh, if the patient was having bruxism or teeth clenching during this natural uh, dentition so uh, all these will give an idea about the patient's uh, habits and a positive history of tobacco consumption should alert the dentist about any pre malignant lesions like leukoplakia osmf etc that can cause restricted mouth opening so the patient also should be educated about these pre malignant lesions if they are having a positive history of uh, tobacco chewing or smoking so this is about the personal history coming to the dental history that includes history of dental extractions and the pre treatment records that is the uh, information regarding the previous danger existing danger pre extraction records so from the history of dental extraction we get to know about the period of inangulousness and that will give you information about the amount and pattern of bone resorption and also the cause for tooth loss now coming to previous danger so Uh, it denotes danger which we have worn before the current danger so the reason for the failure of the process is we get to know and the patients who keep on changing the danger within a short period of time they are difficult to satisfy and also risky to deal with now current danger evaluating the current danger to determine physical aesthetic and anatomic characteristics the shade mold and material can be um, an idea we can get about the shade mold and material of the tooth and also we have to evaluate the centric relation the vertical dimension occlusal plane orientation maxillary mandibular midline whether it's matching the posterior palatal seal the danger base adaptation the characterization danger hygiene and the tooth wear 
all these information you have to record and the pre-extraction records. So uh, this will serve as a guide in the construction of the new danger because they will give an idea about the shape, the form, color and position of the natural teeth, the video, the lip support, the relationship of the teeth to lips etc. So this is about dental history. Next is the extra oral examination and under this you can expect some uh, basic classification. So first one is the classification of facial form by Williams. So he classified based on the outline that is square tapering, square tapering and ovoid. Next the classification of facial profile as class 1 that is a normal or straight then the class 2 that is retrognathic and class 3 that is the prognathic profile. Next is the complexion that is the hair color, eye and skin color provide useful guides in shade selection and then the muzzle tone classification by house that is a class 1 normal tone and function class 2 normal function with decreased tone and class 3 decreased tone and function. Next coming to the lip examination. So first health of the lips should be evaluated. So any cracking or fissuring at the corners and ulceration should be noted and these changes can be um, due to vitamin uh, B complex deficiency or a candidal infection and an excessive overclosure of an existing danger. So the cause of the situation must be determined and then the lip must be examined for the lip length lip thickness, lip support and mobility and these classification also you should be thorough with. So coming to the length of the lip that is the distance from the depth of the buccal vestibule to the dry wet junction and the classification according to Arnott and Bergman that is the normal short and long depending upon the length of the lip. So what is the significance of long and short lips? So long lips they hide the teeth so they reveal very less tooth material and so there is chance that we set the teeth too long during teeth setting and short lips they expose most of the tooth surface and even part of the danger base and so special attention should be given to the color and form of the danger base. Next is the lip thickness classification again thin lip and thick lip so the significance of each so a thick lip gives the dentist more freedom in setting the teeth whereas a thin lip any small change in the labiolingual position of the tooth can alter the fullness, the support or drape of a thin lip. Next the lip support must be evaluated that is a nasolabial angle the normal one that is 90 to 110 degree and when there is a lack of lip support there is collapsed appearance and wrinkling and also there is a rolled in vermilion border. So uh, the classification of lip support is adequately supported or unsupported. Next the lip mobility can be classified as normal the one with reduced mobility and paralyzed lips. So patients with minimal lip mobility they show very little of the anterior teeth and some stroke victims will have a paralyzed lip so that will lead to unilateral mouth droop and facial asymmetry. So in such cases the patients should be counseled regarding the treatment limitations. Next is the TMJ examination. So any uh, tenderness in and around the TMJ and ear, the degree of mouth opening, any midline deviation when the patient open and closes and also any clicking or crackling sound in the joint, all these should be evaluated and uh, should be recorded. Now under the lip examination you can expect a question that is a difference between a smile line and a lip line. So what is a smile line? So this is an imaginary line along the incisal edges of the maxillary anterior teeth which should mimic the curvature of the superior border of the lower lip while smiling. So this is the smile line whereas lip line it is the position of the inferior border of the upper lip. So it is the position of the inferior border of the upper lip during the smile formation and that determines the display of uh, tooth or gingiva at this hard and soft tissue interface. So this is the difference between smile line and lip line. So this is the smile line which is along the incisal edges of the maxillary anterior teeth and the lip line that is the inferior border of the upper lip which determines the um, display of the tooth or gingiva at that area. 
the degree of mouth opening is actually the distance measured between the upper vermilion and the lower vermilion and it is usually the three finger length now where the patients are having restricted mouth opening like in case of oral submucous fibrosis what are the procedures that can be done and the impression techniques in microstomia patients how do you manage such patients such questions you can expect your in your viva as well as in your theory exam now under the palpation of tmj it can be intraauricular and extraauricular palpation so the examiner may ask you to demonstrate the palpation of the tmj so under the uh, extraauricular palpation or the lateral palpation you have to exert slight pressure on the condylar process with your index finger that is you have to place your index finger in the preauricular region about 1.5 cm medial to the tragus of the ear and the lateral pole of the condyle is accessible during this examination so you have to palpate the coordination of the condylar heads of both sides simultaneously and in the intraauricular or the posterior palpation position your little fingers in the external auditory meatus and during mandibular movement the posterior pole of the condylar head can be palpated with the pulp of your little finger so uh, palpate the posterior surface of the condyle during opening and closing of the mandibular movement now another question you can expect in the tmj examination is about the uh, tmj sounds so there are basically two types of sounds one is uh, clicking and the other one is crepitus now what is the difference between clicking and crepitus clicking is a single explosive noise of short duration whereas crepitus is a continuous grating noise and uh, how do you auscultate the tmj so the in the auscultation the noise is assessed by a stethoscope okay and it can be of two types again that is clicking or crepitus now what is the prosthodontic significance of tmj examination so if there is an unhealthy tmj it complicates the jaw relation records and centric relation it depends upon the structural and functional harmony of these osseous structures the intraarticular tissue and the capsular ligaments so when there is a disturbance in that there is difficulty to give correct and repeatable centric relation now coming to the neuromuscular evaluation where you evaluate the speech and the neuromuscular coordination of the patient so patients who are capable of articulating speech without any issues with the existing danger usually does not have problem producing the uh, speech with the new dangers also but those who are having speech impediments they require special attention with the anterior teeth placement as well as the palatal portion of the danger base now the speech can be classified as the normal and affected speech and under neuromuscular coordination it is classified as excellent fair and poor that is patients with good neuromuscular coordination can be expected to learn to manipulate dangers relatively quickly and they don't have any issue with the usage of dangers whereas those who are having poor neuromuscular coordination or a neurological defect may be a stroke so the such patients may never adapt to a danger completely so this is about the neuromuscular evaluation now next is the intraoral examination which will be continued in our next session so thank you all for watching my video please do like and share my videos if you are finding them useful and if you are new to this channel prosta hub please do subscribe and support me and if you have any queries suggestions feedbacks or any topic that needs to be discussed do comment below this video or you can mail me at this mail id also you can watch my playlist prosta viva questions where i have included most of the viva questions that you can expect in your chair side as well as grand viva so thank you all once again and we'll meet in our next session